Well, what a week it's been and is. I mean, it's the week in which the beautiful game became the ugly game, all because of bribery and corruption. And now we have a row about what constitutes a bribe. Very good cartoon by Zapiro said, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it must be a, well, genuine donation to a, a certain group within FIFA that happened to have 41 votes that you needed. Well, who knows? But what it has done, it's, it's knocked the whole tragedy of the earthquake in Nepal off the front pages and off the news leads. But Nepal and FIFA are totally linked. And the link is the Qatar right to stage the 2022 World Cup, a very controversial thing that was given again by Sepp Blatter and company. Qatar is a little oil-rich Gulf state with about 2 million citizens and 1.4 migrant labors. Now the International Trade Union Confederation and a number of unions have for years been complaining about conditions for workers in that country. Did FIFA care? Well, yes, they, they did care about the fact that summer temperatures are sometimes 45 degrees Celsius and more, and dehydration and heat stroke are a real problem. But what they were worried about was for the paying punters, for the spectators and the players. But it is in those conditions that thousands of wor workers, many of them from Nepal, labor for 10 hours a day. And so far, and we're still counting, more than 1,200 of those workers have died building those stadiums. Or should I say stadia if we're being pedantic. When we built our World Cup stadiums in South Africa, two workers died. That's to give you the, the sort of idea because of the lack of, of basic safety conditions. And these workers often do not get properly paid. They're kept in the most horrendous conditions. And when the Nepalese earthquake struck, many of these men wanted to return to look for their families, to bury their families, to mourn for their families, and they were refused because they're in debt. This is what it's all about. The recruitment agencies who pull these people in, this is labor broking on an international scale and shows what labor broking can lead to. These labor brokers go to countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, the Philippines, and they offer great work, good pay, they promise, but only if the families who are sending their sons and their brothers and their husbands to work on such tasks as the building of the stadium in Qatar, pay up an average of 1,000 US dollars. That's 12,000 Rand. They go into mortgage, their houses, their property, all that sort of thing. But when these workers arrive there, they discover they've got to pay off the debt and the wages don't come anywhere near it. So it's a situation of virtual slavery. It's a global reality. And that is what I'm going to concentrate on in my Inside Labor column, which you can read on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow, and on City Press in the business section on Sunday. I'd like to hear your views on this. I happen to think that we should never have split Nepal from FIFA. We should have put the two together. Unfortunately, the media tends to compartmentalize everything. We shouldn't do that, because in order to understand what is really going on, we need to look at the whole picture. And that's what I hope to do. Your views, as always, to editor at fin24.com or in the comment section below. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.